Awarded Car of the Year 2021 by Auto Express, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 promises to be a very, very good car. Today, I've been very fortunate enough to have Hyundai invite me down to drive a couple of their different cars. And I've been excited about this car. There's lots of hype online about it. And so in the video today, I'm gonna go around the outside, the inside, go for a drive and talk numbers in the hope that I can answer a very simple question. Does the Ioniq 5 live up to the hype? You know what? Let's find out. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights So what do we think about the outside? Well, I think it's a very good looking car Lights are a big thing for me. So this has got the 256 cubic pixel LEDs. They look great. You've got nice angles to the front. And actually, while we're here, just looking down, there are no kind of fake grills. It's not a you know, petrol car where you've got lots of radiators. So it's all clean. It's nice lines. And so moving down to the side of the car, we've got nice lines on it. We've got this nice kind of effect, which looks, I think, really nice. It's, it's tricky on the side of the car, isn't it, to kind of think of what to do. I think they've done a very nice job of it. Also, wing mirrors, you've got a camera underneath, and I like these door handles. They are very Aston Martin, aren't they? Jump to the back. What do we think? More lights. That's always a good thing. So you've got a nice strip along the back here. Obviously, you've got the Hyundai logo. You've got white with black, which always, I think always looks nice, but again, it's just a good-looking car. Kind of every angle you go round, I don't think there's a bad-looking angle on it. I mean, you know, maybe something like a Porsche Taycan would be a bit more attractive, but this is not this is not trying to be that, is it? It's a nice family-sized electric car, like um, the Q4. I've driven a Q4. If you haven't seen my video, click up a link and have a look at the Q4. But for me, this is probably a similar kind of thing. This is a little bit less expensive, and actually vanity for money, it's going to be interesting to see where they fit. But yeah, all round, a good-looking car. Let's jump inside. I really want to know, really want to know. So yeah, let's jump in and let's see what the Ionic 5 is like inside moving. Good news that. Right, so first thing you should know about the Ionic 5 is that it is a brand new electric vehicle from the ground up. It doesn't cover any other base of any other Hyundai. It is brand new. Does mean there's some really cool features in here. Now, first of all, we've got a nice flat floor. Uh, there's no kind of transmission tunnel you'd get on a you know, diesel or petrol car and um, because it doesn't need to be, you know. So actually, you've got a big amount of space in here. But the first thing you recognise is just these seats are oh, like a lounge chair. They're so comfortable. I mean, all the materials are really nice. There's a big thing about high end at the moment is that they're using a lot of eco-friendly materials, recycled materials, things that actually feel like you know you think these are leather but actually they just feel great so down the side we've got electric chairs which are actually just pulled you know up down forward backwards and there's also some lumbar support as well when you pop the ignition on you are greeted by these lovely 12.3 inch displays in front of you you've got one in front of you here with all my driving systems and you can change the layout by these different buttons on the steering wheel which is cool in the middle you've got a second 12.3 inch touchscreen which is touchscreen this one so you can go through and do your different modes and things it's just a really nice layout everything seems pretty intuitive you know you can press all the different systems on here and everything seems you know to be pretty responsive obviously the big thing is that when you're using your iphone or whatever you've got it's gonna be really quick so you kind of want your car to be in a similar way you know nice and quick and actually it is really nice below the screen we've got buttons and touch sensitive touchscreen controls now i'm a bit ummy and ahhing i like manual buttons because they're a little bit less distracting when you're driving but you know these are pretty good and actually when you're driving you kind of get used to where they are so actually you can kind of just glance down quickly and get it rather than obviously having to worry about taking your eyes off the road which is the main thing on the steering wheel you've got a nice flat bottom which i really like you've got your drive mode button as well so you can pop the drive mode button eco normal sport again this car's not set up to be 
you know, a super sporty car, but, you know, you'd be able to, you know, have a little bit quicker response to it, quicker steering, that kind of thing. Down here, this is where the gear selector is, and it's, it's not like a bar that you move. There's a little twisty knob thing, and then you press the brake on the end. Now, bit of a bit of a weird place to put it, but then again, I guess, why not put it there? Because you don't need it in the middle because there's no, like, it's not going down to a transmission, so why not have it there? I guess it's just like a normal stalk. As we move down, we've got storage in here. We've got USB ports, more. You've got USB there and you've got them there. Cup holders, so I've got a bottle in there, which works perfectly fine. I've got my phone and bits and bobs down there with the keys and you get a wireless charging pad if you want to. But then, if you look in here, you've even got behind there an ability to slide this backwards and forwards. So you can see E, either you've got to, if you can't get out of this side and someone's part next to you, you can slide across really easily but also if you look at it you've now got a little table so if you wanted to pop in the back and do some work or have a little picnic with a fam you've kind of got that so that's really really cool it's just you know what it's just what i'm really learning about hyundai today having driven a couple of cars is that the build quality is far beyond what i thought it it would be you know everything yeah, nothing is kind of, you know, that kind of e e creaky, uh, kind of um, plasticky feel. Nothing on here is giving me the sense that it is kind of cheap or that it's plasticky. Glove box, this comes out like a tray rather than drops down. It means that you kind of always got the same space. You know when you pop like sunglasses and stuff in the box and you kind of close it and it clunks and you end up like, breaking the box. This one just slides in and out. So, in the back. What do we think? Oh, well, um, that is in my normal driving position. And I, I like I'm in a limo, which I've never seen before. Look how much space I've got. Um, lots of headroom as well. I uh, can see nicely out of the windows. Seems like a, a nice place to be. Again, I think because this particular car's electric, you've got no kind of floor. You can get in and out easily. You've got USBs. You've got a little drop-down thing here with cup holders, which is nice and comfortable for your passengers. You, again, you've got bows. You've got lights. You've got heated seats in the back. Press the little button here. Heated seat. I mean, it's like being in a little limo in the back of this. It's just really nice. I'm amazed. I'm absolutely amazed. Right, let's check the boot out and let's go for a drive. So, round the back, we have 500 and... How do you do this? There we go. 527 litres of big space, but then if you pop the seats down over 1500 litres of boot space which is more than an Audi Q4 right you know what please close I think it's time because it's getting a bit cold to jump in and see what it's like on the move let's go you can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high even if the sky is falling down So this car will do 298 miles on a full charge and will go from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes. Behind the steering wheel you've got these paddles which you can use to increase and decrease the amount of regenerative braking that the car will give you. So if you press the paddles the car will either slow down more or slow down less. Now there is a point where there's a horse in front of me. Now I don't actually, have, I'm not touching the brake right now because the regenerative braking is taking the speed off for me. So actually, it's a really, really good way of doing it. And it puts power back into the batteries to help with the range. No worry. See, and a quiet car, horses, like electric. Let's put the foot down. Jesus, bloody Nora. Now the quickest version of this car has around about 300 horsepower and goes from 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. So let's just feel what it feels like. Bloody hell. Okay. Blind me. I could give me a little head rush then. Yeah, it's quick. It's definitely quick. It feels quick. It feels like, you know, that electric sensation of kind of that kind of just, just pushes you back and keeps going because there's no gears. It just keeps going and going and going. So, yeah, that kind of took me by surprise. That, dude. that was awesome. So, the Ionic 5, what is it? So, I've heard a lot of hype about this car and I want to know why because really there's so many different you know electric cars on the market so why would you get this on why has it got so much hype well if you look at it today you've got things like the Kia EV6 and the Audi Q4 now I drove the Audi Q4 
and I have got a, link, a video so I can show you that now but that car was nice but actually I wasn't that impressed I was expecting more from Audi to be honest I said earlier great build quality everything feels sturdy doesn't feel like it's going to break like the the touch the you know, soft touches on the side there the dash feels good these two 12.3 inch displays are really crisp and no, no kind of rattling everything just feels really really just sturdy and good quality visibility is good wind mirrors are nice and large i like a big large wind mirror yeah and the pillars at the back might be quite big and you might be used to something a little bit smaller but all in all you know i can see out of it absolutely fine big rear view mirror big screen at the back everything's really nice and actually to add to that when you're indicating you're turning right or left the cameras underneath the wing mirrors show you what it can see so actually it just helps with curves and things you're not going to curb it that kind of thing now I'm going down this hill at the moment and one of the nice things about this is that the regenerative braking, the bit that I've got with the paddles at the back, it's slowing it down. So I've not braked at all going down this hill and it is a steep hill. My ears have just popped. And yeah, it's just doing it itself, which is really, really cool. Now I wanna play with this button. It's a drive mode. Now what you do is you press it and it goes into sport. Now we're in sports mode. Let's really see how far this car goes. I'm just gonna be gentle, right? There's no one around. Are you ready? Doing about 15 miles an hour now, and go. 40, 50, oh, <laughs> my God! That made me feel all funny, my head's got all light. This is a really quick car. Also, the range has just gone from 203 to 197. Don't drive these cars quickly all the time, it's ridiculous. But if you just wanna overtake someone, God, the kick down is good. There's no gears, is there? So that's the joys of electric cars. If you're looking at electric cars and you're a bit like, oh, I'm not sure because I'm a bit, a bit worried, but you're used to petrol diesel cars, especially turbocharged cars, you're going to have a bit of lag in those cars. This just instant, instant, instant power. And it is blimmin' quick. Jeez, I'm going to pop it back into Eco now and see what we have in Eco. So in front of me, I, I really like this display, by the way. It's very crisp, very clear. Interesting way of doing it. You've got these kind of little sliders. On the left-hand side, the, the speed goes up on the left. So interesting way of doing it. Again, I've got my head-up display, though, so I can look at, I've got my navigation. It says 60 miles an hour on this particular road, and I've got, you know, my miles I'm doing right now. So, yeah, that's really useful. I like that kind of thing. It's also got things like it keeps you in lanes. So if it goes to, the, goes to the middle of the road and there's a line, it steers you back in, as it's doing now, which I'm not touching it. It's, it's literally steering itself. And the other way? Oh my God, it is literally steering itself. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. Shh, 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 shh. Yes. Will it, will it do it here if I turn into the right? Oh my God. Turn again. Look, it's keeping itself in the middle of the road. I Keep hands on steering wheel. Yes, I know that, I'm just showing you what it's like. I'm literally not steering and it's, yeah, oh. God, it actually probably does it, which is great. You know, if you're doing long journeys on the motorway and you get tired, and we always say you have to have a stop, and you should do, but realistically, if you're trying to get home and you just need to see your family and you've had a long day and you do get a bit drowsy on the, on the motorway, this could definitely save your life. So that's actually really impressive. So what is the ride like in the Ionic 5? Well, very nice. What I just noticed is it just kind of floats along, and I think that's always a nice sign. I mean, it's a bit, yeah, a bit, maybe people say it's a bit wallowy or boaty, you know, how it goes over the, the sea, the kind of, that kind of flow. But it's really nice. It just takes that kind of stress out of it. You know, sometimes when you just tense up, you're like, oh, that's going to hurt. It's just really nice and flowy. Right, let's talk about price. This car starts from £36,600 and goes up to just over £46,000. Now, I mentioned the Q4, the Audi Q4, a couple of times in this video because the Audi Q4 starts from around about £46,000. So if you're thinking top of the line region of this or early entry level of a Q4, then you're probably going to be thinking, well, what do I do? Now in this car, think about it, you're getting top of the range in this car, you're getting a lot of car for your money compared to the Q4, where you have to spec up to 50s to get the equivalent kind of spec. So, you know, things like 360 cameras, the, the cameras on the uh, door mirrors, lots of that kind of thing, you're gonna have to spec up on an Audi, whereas this starting price of the Audi is basically top of the range from this. 
Now, Hyundai have created something called a electric global modular platform, which they say gives you quicker charging, better range, and more space inside. Now, range is 298, it's pretty good. Going from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes is brilliant. That's quick, quickly into Starbucks, grab yourself a drink, check some phone or your Instagram or whatever, and it's charged. And inside, these seats, move forward and backwards in a map you know a huge amount got a lot of space inside the center console move backwards and forwards you can stretch across through there you've got great space in the back so this new platform they've got on this car i mean i'd say it works um as i said it is a ground up fully electric car and the platform they've created is is enabling some really important stuff on the topic of safety what do we have in the ionic 5 well it's a good question you have seven airbags in this car and basically, you've got all where you'd think they normally be, plus a huge one that goes all the way along the back, so you're, all your passengers you are safe. You've also got this SOS button at the top. So you can press that every day of the year, 365 days, anytime, and you'll get emergency services sent out to you. But also, if you have an accident, the airbags go off and you're unconscious in a bad way, it will automatically call the emergency services and share your location with them. So safety-wise, it's good. You've also got things like collision warning and also lane departure, so you're not going to move from lanes. And You've got the head-up display to keep your eyes on the road. So, yeah, as a car that's, if you're safety conscious, it's doing well here. Right. You join me in a small town, and I'm going to figure out how easy this car is to manoeuvre. So I'm just, there's a church on me, it's a lovely church, and I'm just going to pull up just next to this Igo, and I'm just going to parallel park and see how well it does at parking. Well, how well I can. So pull up beside it. So I'm going to indicate in. There's. I, I'm sorry. I've got. A, I've got. A, I'm not going backwards. So I've got a photo. A camera under that mirror shows me a little picture of what I'm seeing behind me. I've also got the 360 degree camera. So let's just start working backwards. Again, I'm looking at all the cameras. Cameras can be a bit distracting. Personally, I more use the mirrors. But we're going in nicely now. There it is, a bit of full lock. Again, I can check. I'm looking good on all the sides. There we go. So I just straighten up. Hey, hey, I'm in the space. So while I'm here, let me just show you what I'm seeing out the camera. So on this middle screen, you can see I've got the 360 camera here, which I can move around like this. Look at that. That's the car. That's where I am. That's the Igo that I just parked behind. You can see that. But you've also got the traditional view. This is the bird's eye view. Um, but you can also change that. You can you know, move that in and out and things. But that's what you've got. And then if I just indicate, you then got, this is what you see. So if you indicate, they then pop up. And you can see the nice curve there. So actually, that's really, really useful. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jack, great. Thank you very much for showing us that you can parallel park a car. But what's the turning circle like? Well, let's find out. I'm going to do a three-point turn here. It's not a small car. No one's coming, so I'm gonna use this. I've put the wipers on, sorry about that. Right, there we go. Going backwards, I'm using the cameras here. Stopping there, choosing the little twisty knob thing. Back again. All right, I was hoping to get around, but that's fine, we'll get around again. It's not a small car, so you've got to expect, you're gonna do a bit of fiddling, but I'm away. The cameras were useful there, to be fair. There's a lot of them, and they can be distracting. You can, you can change them how you want it, but that was all right not bad now if you are the type of person that lives in a quaint small little british village and you want to make sure that you preserve the quietness and the peace of that town then you're probably thinking is the car loud and well no it's not loud it's very, very quiet. I mean, it is electric, after all, but what if you go slower? Does it make a sound? Ooh, a little buzzy sound. So ladies, like, hello, darling. Old ladies, like that lady over there, hear you, and then they don't pull out in front of you, and they don't, you know, smash into your car, or in Tesco's car park, they don't pull out with the shopping. So, yeah, makes a sound when it goes slow, sounds nice and quiet when you're on the move good note. So I have driven the Hyundai Ionic 5 for about half an hour, 40 minutes now, and you know what? I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Now, Hyundai were fantastic 
to invite me down here to drive a couple of their cars. And I wanted to get out in this car because I heard a lot of hype about it and I wanted to experience it for myself. Now, this car, as I said, is in a price range where you're either going to be at the lower end of some things like Audis and Mercedes or at the top end of some of the lower end cars. So it fits nicely in that middle bit where actually you're getting a lot of car, a lot of value for your money. And that's what I, the big thing I take away from this car is it is a great value for money. You've got lots of tech. It's super comfortable, very, very fast. And that's not an understatement. It is a very fast car, but also it's refined. The quality is good. The, the screens, the technology is all very useful. It's very high tech. It's very current. So in conclusion, I said, does the Ionic 5 live up to the hype? And absolutely it does. If you're thinking about purchasing a electric car and you're thinking like maybe an ID4 or an EV6 or a Q4, jump down to your Hyundai dealership and just jump in one of these, have a drive and see what you think. I'm not saying buy one because you know it's not going to be for everyone, but you should definitely consider buying this car because it is a very, very good car. As I said, a massive thank you to Hyundai for inviting me down today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to comment below what you think of the car, the color, the technology, whether you'd buy one, whether you think something else is better. I'd love to hear from you guys. Make sure to subscribe to see lots of future videos to come. But for now, I'll see you very, very soon. I've got